Hey, what's up, gang? We're excited for tonight's third wave service. I pray and, pre and hope that you're preparing for tomorrow because it's Christmas Eve. And we know that a lot of you have great plans in store with family, with friends. We're going to bake cookies. We're going to play games. And we're going to have a good time. But we never want to forget at the core of Christmas is Christ. He's the purpose. He's the reason why we've got breath in our lungs, why we're excited and filled with joy and filled with life. And today, I know that right now we're about to hear some videos of testimonies. Some of the people you know, family, friends, leaders here in the gang ministry in Eagle Rock. And I pray that your hearts are open. Because just the same way God changed their life, He can change yours. Just the same way that they were filled with hope and joy and got the victory, so can you. And I pray that tonight you recognize that. You see that you're not in this by yourself. You're doing it with family and amongst community. So know that there's room for you in this vision. The third wave is a movement. It's not an image. It's not an idea. It's a movement. And every single person in the gang ministry of Eagle Rock is a part of that movement. So tonight, open up your hearts, enjoy yourselves, and pray. Pray that God would give you a promise, a hope in this time of 2021. Because next year, we're going to start strong. And we're going to do it together. God bless you, gang. I can't wait to see you next week. Hi everyone, my name is Lily. I'm one of the gang leaders here at Victory Outreach Eagle Rock. What's up guys, my name is Jacob. Uh, I'm a drummer here at Victory Outreach Eagle Rock, part of the worship team. Hey guys, my name is Anthony Galson. I'm a gang leader here at Victory Outreach Eagle Rock. Hi, my name is Stephanie and I'm part of the gang team here in Victory Outreach. And today I wanna to share with you why God is essential in this season. So as I reflect on the coming year and the Christmas time, I'm always, I always bring, my thoughts always come back to like not really myself or my family because my, my Christmases were okay, you know, they weren't horrible, they weren't the best, but they were good enough. But usually when, when I'm thinking about Christmas, I'm thinking about the Christmases of my students. I'm a teacher in training and I've worked with kids almost my entire career. And a lot of the times, they don't have the best. Growing up as a kid during the holidays, um, once my dad left, it was very difficult. Um, we hit really, really bad, at tough areas in our lives with my mom and my brother. Um, once my dad left our home, we became very poor. Um, times where she would have to work two to three jobs and really it was very, very hard to a point that she would have to lie to us and tell us that we're Christians and we don't really celebrate those holidays. And she was doing all that to protect us and not hurt us growing up. And to tell you the truth, it was something I grew up with and I would tell people that uh, I'm this for that reason. And I don't celebrate those things. The only things we would celebrate are, you know, our birthdays. <laughs> Usually around this time of year, I know it can seem like it's the happiest time of the year where you see everyone very joyful, where there's so many lights, and you see all the gifts and decorations, and it's supposed to be a time of warmth and comfort. For me, it wasn't always like that. I can say that during those times, I felt the lowest and most sad. Family was one thing that really hurt me. I think every year, there was less, there's less people in fa family gatherings less people and more arguments and it made me very bitter towards everything but I didn't want to be the burden I didn't want to be the one crying in the corner so I would hide it because I felt so much shame and guilt of what I did and how I felt so it was easy hiding it uh, I was I was born and raised in the ministry um, a part of this church at a very young age I, I began to struggle with uh, depression and anxiety. And when it first started happening, um, the first thing I wanted to do was just tell someone about it, you know? Um, just tell them like, oh, this is what I'm going through. And, and it would help. But the problem with it was the more I did it, the more I just felt like I was being a burden to someone. And from that and kind of just making it seem like, or in my head anyways, it felt like, 
man, I think they, they probably think I'm a drama queen, you know, that I have all these problems. And I told myself, like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna complain about it anymore. You know, I'm, I'm gonna deal with it because it's here. But at this point, I'm so tired of people seeing me as a victim that I just decided, like, I'm, I'm just gonna go through by myself. And it was the biggest lie that the enemy has ever told me. Yeah, when I think about my students' Christmases, like they're, they're the Christmases that come to mind because as their teacher, I was always there to like bring joy and bring happy time. And Christmas is supposed to be a time of joy, a time of peace, like people, the best time of the year. But for a lot of my students, it really wasn't. It was a time of distress, a time of hardship, a time of anxiety. I was like, they were sometimes fearful of their home environment. They didn't know like, where their next meal was gonna come through. Some of them had their lights shut off and it was pretty heartbreaking to know that I couldn't be there for them. Cause then, you know, they're my kids. Like, yeah, I'm their teacher and stuff, but you're with them for most of the day. And it's just really hard to like, not be able to control and protect them during that time. I think it was easy to hide, but it was something that hurt inside. Swallowing that pride and even like, swallowing your tears so that no one sees them. It really did hurt. And I felt like I couldn't go to God because he was silent, because I felt like he didn't listen to me, because I didn't understand how he can let so much things go around like this. At that point, at things progressively getting worse, and uh, I tried taking my own life. Um, so I was ready just to go, you know? I, I didn't want to deal with staying up late nights, overthinking everything in my head and just being tormented by this. And I just remember at the time everyone was calling me at my, my brother and sister who were, you know, part of the worship team too, my parents, all of them hitting me up and just like, hey, where are you? We love you, we're praying for you, you know? And it was so crazy in that moment of just like being, you know, in, on this bridge in, in the middle of nowhere and it's so dark and cold, yet I felt so warm, you know? And that was kind of like the moment where I knew like, like I needed to make a change. Um, yeah, but the good thing is that now, I, this past year I've been growing a lot more in like my faith and walking with Jesus and that has helped me. It's given me a lot of comfort to know that I'm not trying to protect them, I'm not fighting for them alone. They're not alone. They have Jesus with them all the time. Even if they don't really know him that much, like I, can pray for them. My faith can be the bridge between their situation and their future glory. But what I want to encourage you with is that you can go to God, you can go cry to God, that you can lay your burdens on God because He doesn't judge you. He's a God who loves you and He's a father and a best friend to you. God was my best gift that I've ever received. This year, I learned that I don't have to hide that pain, that I don't have to hide from anything, that I can go to God and give it all to Him. And He's healed me, and I can understand now that joy, that peace and love that everyone talks about, because He's placed it in my heart, and He's made me a brand new person. And it wasn't actually until I came back and I got to experience a worship service um, that it all finally changed. and. It was through that worship where I got a breakthrough. And these chains that I've been holding on to throughout all these years, they were finally broken, you know? And it was so crazy to me because I'd never thought it would happen. I never thought that I'd be able to be, to get that revelation or get that breakthrough. But when it finally did, I was like, wow, like what a lie I believed for so long. And it's so crazy because I know that there's a lot of you guys out there you know, that might be going through the same issue, or you don't know who to share it with, or you just don't want to be a burden to others. And I want to let you know, man, that that depression, that anxiety that you have, that you can, it could be broken at, at any moment through Jesus, you know? So I want to encourage you, wherever you're at, you don't have to be at a church service. You don't have to be at an altar. You don't have to be in front of a pastor. No, you just, wherever you're at right now, you can literally go on your knees and call out to Jesus. And that's just the amazing, the amazing thing about it is that He is wherever you are and you just need to call out to Him. But you know what, what, I, what I loved about it most of is that we had those times where we would be, you know, Thanksgiving or even Christmas, 
It was the times where we would just have family bonds, watching TV, eating dinner, enjoying those moments together without any presents, without any celebration. It was just a time of bonding with family. I say all that to say this, that now in my life, I'm grateful for everything that God has done in my life. Um, I have joy in my life. I have family. I'm engaged now and I'm, I'm just so grateful that everything God has done in my life. Now I have joy. Now I have a, a, a sense of motivation to live my life and to continue striving for God. Even though I didn't have presence growing up, now I have the greatest gift, which is Jesus Christ. And if you're like us, you don't want your next year to be like this year. Just know that God has some amazing things planned in store for your life. And why not take advantage of those things? Why not step into those promises? And you can do that by accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And if you're there right now, and if you're saying like, man, I'm ready to make a change, or man, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to give it all to God, then I want you to say this prayer with me right now. Dear Jesus, I thank you for what you're about to do in my life, giving me this joy and this love and this purpose. I accept you as my Lord and as my Savior. Change me, rearrange me, and make me to all that you want me to be. In Jesus' name, amen. And I just wanna thank you guys so much for taking that step and saying that prayer. And, but just know that that is the first step of many. But the good thing is, is that you don't have to do those steps alone. So right now, I wanna throw a challenge at you, is that this Thursday at 7 p.m., we want you here joining this family. So come on out, enjoy the laughs and the love, and let's end the year strong. Merry Christmas.